Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing great. Danny Dan here, welcome back to Danny's Recreational Space. I met quite a few people recently that wanted to know more about trash bashing, and each time I'd show them my work, they would ask me questions like How do you do it? Where do you find the materials? How do you come up with ideas for a specific build? And most of all, what about the color scheme you choose when it comes to paint the model? So I made this video to share my personal view about trash bashing. No toys, no parts from model kits, only trash. For this specific build I decided to stick to the most common and recurrent waste items I am able to find in my household and see what I can make of them, exploiting them to the utmost. And what you are admiring now is basically an overview of the most recurrent waste items I have been collecting day by day for quite some time now, most of which I have in multiples. To those who are new to this practice, to this trash bashing, and I certainly fit in this category as well, let's make clear that the point here is not to come up with something beautiful and not even something that is necessarily meant to resemble some well-known spaceship uh, from a well-known movie or series, nothing like that. But rather to start feeling confident about scratch building with junk items, uh, having fun all along the process. Uh, and now with some stress relieved uh, we can start to build. After removing the goo from the sticky sticker with some white spirit, the first phase can begin. And this is where different possibilities, different purposes for the bits are considered. Sometimes the resemblance of the existing bits with what the crafter has in mind and tries to reproduce is just striking. The wine nozzles, for instance, will definitely become the engine reactors of the ship while other times, instead, a bigger amount of imagination is required. But I say, what if it was only a matter of listening to the beats? You know, let the beats speak for you. Hey Danny Dan, all my life I dreamt to be an engine reactor instead of a wine nozzle, you know that. Me, I feel I was born to be the strong body of a spaceship and take bold astronauts into outer space. But somehow I have been a for plastic bottle for my whole life. I want to become the FDL driver of a spacecraft. I can't stand you no more to be no plastic lid. Well, I'm sure you got the idea. Get out of the way. One by one, every bit finds its own purpose within the build. The lid of the cloth softener bottle becomes the cockpit of the ship, and the plastic bottle the strong body of the ship, as requested. Since the ship will be covered with details, it's better to sand it thoroughly to make both super glue and paint to stick better to the surface. The bottom part of the nozzle is shaped using something that has a diameter as close as this possible to that one of the plastic bottle. In this particular case, a cardboard tube came in pretty handy. While it was crystal clear that the nozzles would become engines, the handles, though, on the other way, didn't seem to find any application. Me, I've always dreamt of being a wing and be caressed by the air of the thin sky, but my body was somehow trapped into the plastic handle and all that I got in touch with have been dirty human hands. Fair enough, I would say. The habit of saving from the recycle being the same recurrent items over and over gives the junk junkie the opportunity to build in multiples. And I surely am aware of that. This way it was possible to come up with not less than four wings for the ship, each one made coupling together two pieces. The circumference of the bottle is divided into six parts, starting from the parting line left by the mold. This way, the four wings and the two reactors will be equally spaced from one another. Adhesive scenting paper might be a good choice to prevent the ruler from slipping away when measuring on a convex surface. In an attempt to conceal the parting line, the reactors are positioned right on it. After drilling some holes, the four wings are poked through the bottle. 
And now the components uh, which will make up the main structure of the build are ready to be glued into place. It's time for the bottle's original green lid to find some application within the build, just like it happened with the other components. And uh, by now it seems to have become a common practice that one of asking the bits themselves what they'd like to become. And I surely don't want this bit to be any exception. I want to become an engine reactor! <laughs> oh gosh, I knew it. Listen, I'm awfully sorry for that, but uh, it so happens that the ship already has two engine reactors. But you can find your place in the posterior part of the ship. I don't want to become no posterior part. <laughs> the back of the ship is where lives the FTL drive, you know, used for jumping into hyperspace. Oh, that's so cool, that's so cool, I want to be that. <laughs> Kids. It's interesting how sometimes little adjustments can make a big difference, just like the decoration patterns on these lids, if put together one against another. And this is the little spacecraft with the main components in place. So how do you guys think this ship is coming up so far? Wow, it's so great! Awesome, man! Way to go! Thank you, guys! This tablet container, once cut on a 45 degrees angle, will help to give the reactors a more interesting shape. There is a bit of space in between the two cylinders. To fill the gap, a solution could be gluing an extra layer having the same curve. This will fix the problem, making the cylinders fit perfectly one into the other. This bit here from the wine nozzle told me it wanted to be part of the engine. The ship is definitely coming together. There is still part of the plastic bottle parting line that has to be concealed, and the central part of the handle, a leftover from the making of the wings, is fit for purpose, since it has a nice curve that fits the surface of the bottle. It needs a few adjustments, especially in its posterior part, so to make it uh, fit perfectly around uh, the base of the nozzle. What we just saw here is that sometimes, examining the leftovers, we find out that they're not real leftovers after all, and still find a purpose within the build. And personally, when I make it to use the leftovers of the leftovers, I find it quite satisfactory. And also leftovers from previous decorations can sometimes make the overall aesthetic of the build look more coherent, like this leftover from the tube container that finds its place in the front of the ship. Other bits coming from the wine nozzle find their purpose within the build, providing the reactors with extra details. Let's now examine different possibilities to make the posterior part of the ship. He's talking about me! He's talking about me! Here, a bit chosen from the Tetra Pak packaging collection is the first one of a series to be glued onto the back of the ship after removing its portion with the screw pattern. And yet another part of the wine nozzle is chosen to fill the hole, since it fits perfectly. Thin plastic sheets are a great choice to fill gaps between two different levels. This one in particular will make the surface more even and also provide extra details on the engines. The more the process goes forward, the smaller the details to be applied. These, for example, which are the leftovers of a bit that has been seen quite a few times by now. They're gonna make some fine decorations on the wings. But which way is better, really? This one? This one? Or this one? When doing trash bashing, there should not be such a thing as a right way rather than a wrong way. The way I see it, scratch bashing is a practice that comes straight from the inner child of every one of us, and should remain like that. Would someone ever criticize a child which is having fun with bricks? upon the looks of the build he has just created. Yeah, that was pretty intense, you gotta admit that. Building in a way which is asymmetrical is definitely a field worth exploring, especially for people like me that have always found symmetry and precision much more reassuring. So feel free to let yourself go and see what happens. Personally, I, I think that this pattern here confers a lot of movement to the whole build.
You saw it? Danny Dan is building asymmetrically. No is he way. nuts or something? Hey man, you feeling alright? <laughs> yeah guys, that's alright, thank you. A succession of ring decorations is applied all around the body of the ship in certain spots. This is the original green ring from the plastic bottle and uh, two of these are needed to complete the whole circumference of the bottle. While this is the white ring from the Tetra Pak packaging lid and after checking out some different positions it also finds its spot within the build. with another one placed on the bottom part to complete the circumference. Here comes another white ring, more detailed of the former, uh, which is used to provide the, the tip with uh, some interesting decoration motif. This one has some bumps on the inside that need to be removed to make it stick better on the surface. And now back to the posterior part of the ship. The idea here is to use some leftovers from the plastic handles to do some upgrading uh, in the posterior part of the ship, especially around the um, FDL drive. Exactly like uh, what happened uh, earlier, the plastic handles are shaped using a cylinder having the same circumference uh, of the green lids on which the handle will be attached. Now this is what I call exploiting the scraps. Hey Danny, hey Danny, tell me something here. Tell me something here. The color is like a flag of Italy. You do it on purpose or it's like a beautiful coincidence. In this phase, extra details and decorations are slowly added to the surface of the bottle in an attempt to give it the looks of a spacecraft as much as possible. Or rather, a personal interpretation of it. Sometimes it's only a matter of choosing already textured sheets from the Junk Junkies' own collection of scraps. While some other times the Junk Junkie cuts his way into plastic packaging of all sorts. Just like what will happen with this particular build here. To add details and decorations on a curved surface, an idea could be to use plastic sheets having the same curve to make them stick better. In this particular case, a section cut from an identical plastic bottle will do the job just fine. Strings cut from cleaning supplies bottles, the plastic of which is quite soft, will be used to make a um, big vent-looking detail right on top of the ship. Remember, there's no need to be over-concerned about the way the build looks like. Doesn't have to be beautiful, doesn't have to make people recall something they've seen in a movie or TV series. There's much more to it. And also the painting process has to be considered. That could really change everything in good. Or make things even worse. Uh, but who cares anyway? The important thing is to have fun all along the process. Another thing is build up multiple layers. Where possible, glue one layer onto another to make extra details. More layers translate into more depth and perspective, especially after applying washes and doing some dry brush. Now to the bottom part of the ship. Here, for a change, something already textured, like a disposable cup, might be a cool way to represent, let's say, some sort of hole door, who knows. Using some strips to make a frame all around might be a good idea to make it stand out from the rest of the surface. This is gonna turn amazing after a wash. It should be crystal clear by now that the process of adding details could become addictive. More strips cut from plastic bottles will be used to make the surface more textured here and there. Instead of cutting them all with the same width, like OCD me just did, could be also fun to cut them with different width, just like the strings on a barcode, you know. Here, sticky stickers ripped from toys are cleaned from the goo using white spirit and then glued with super glue on the sides of the ship. Sometimes, even the leftover bits might have an aesthetics of their own and find their own purpose within the build. 
An example of this could be the hole left into a plastic sheet after making a rivet with a hole punch. Like it or not, we're the junk junkies. We have already gotten to a point where we mistake a round lid for a wheel. So, why don't go all the way to madness, I say? Ready for prime! The spacecraft is. But not before applying some rivets here and there. Since I planned the color of the main body of the ship to be grey, I first applied a, a coat of grey primer over the whole model. Before priming, my only concern was to cover the stickers, applying some modeling clay on them. The first color to be applied will be Averland or Averland Sunset, the only yellow I have from my collection of Citadel acrylic colors. I really like this dark yellow, actually. I think it will fit pretty nice into the color scheme I chose for this model. Besides on the engine reactors, I would also like to have some yellow in the frontal portion of the ship and in the middle portion of the ship. I think I'll go for these details in between the wings. The plan is first apply the brighter colors and then move to the darker colors. Just because darker colors have a higher covering power. And for this very reason, there's no need to be too precise. I feel there's the need to apply a second coat of this yellow because uh, it didn't cover much. And I think this is due to the fact that the grey primer was uh, a bit strong as a color to be covered uh, with a yellow painting. And now with black, I will paint all the spots I'll leave plain black, but also all the spots I'll later dry brush with metal colors. Like the vent detail on top of the ship, the hull door detail on the bottom part of the ship, some portions of the engine reactors, definitely the back part of the ship with the FTL drive lips, and also some surface details here and there. I then move on to smear some lead belcher on some selected spots. As I advertised in the thumbnail, I'm trying here to come up with a simple yet visually nice alternation of colors. I think the frontal part of the ship could also use some lead belcher. So I'll use it to paint some, some of these rings and rivet looking spots. I think the main color scheme is now complete, since the main body of the ship will remain grey. And uh, I can now move on to the details. I also use lead belcher to do some dry brushing over the spots I previously painted in black. Namely the whole door, the FTL drive, the vent, the engine reactors and uh, some other spots here and there. It is now finally time to wash over everything with Games Workshop's Null Noil. I couldn't wait for this moment actually, also because I feel I haven't been too precise painting this one. Hopefully the wash will cover up some mistakes and make the whole thing come together nicely. As you can see, I'm literally showering the model with this wash. You actually should proceed little by little, I think, wiping the wash right away from the exposed areas. Here my spacecraft is gonna turn real dirty and the yellow is gonna be killed by the stains left by the dry wash. I'm learning from my own mistakes here. You know what? I'm gonna hit everything with a Zenital Roomfang steel dry brush and see what happens. 
I like the way it came out anyways, actually, and I'm starting to like the dirty look I gave it. Was that even planned? I love washes, uh, I got a bit, let's say, carried away with it. And uh, while I was admiring how the wash sit into the recesses, I totally forgot to wipe out the excess, letting it dry. And now for some glory shots. <laughs> So that's all for today, uh, a big thank you goes to all the new subscribers to the channel and to everybody that like, share, comment on my work. I'm simply grateful for your support and really appreciate that. Special thank you for my first Patreon Alexander Bandinels, thank you so much Alex. And I hope you liked the video and until next time you have a good one, bye!